somehow we are six weeks in to 2024. And if you had set as your New Year's resolution to write your book this year, my guess is you're feeling a little bit frustrated. What normally happens around now is people start to realize that the same things they had tried before are, again, not going to work. That there is no white knuckle gripping that is going to get you through a big, long, new project like your first book. And that's why I want to talk about the number one thing that I see derail so many books, whether it's a business book, a leadership book, a memoir, or even fiction. In fact, this one mistake also can apply to any major project you're taking on in your life for 2024 and beyond. So stay tuned. You are not going to want to miss this. My number one trick for making sure you finish every big project just the way you had hoped. If you have been waiting for a sign that it's time to start your book, this is it. From now until the end of March 2024, every new client who signs on with Page and Podium will be grandfathered in to the 2023 price structure. That is a 20% savings off of our rates going forward. You won't want to miss this. Head over to pageandpodium.com contact to apply. I can't wait to hear about your book. So today I want to share with you the number one thing that I see derail all kinds of book projects and larger projects that are not related to books as well. And that problem is not having a plan. Now, before you turn off the video, let me just say this. When I say you need a plan, here's what I do not mean. I do not mean that you need a template that tells you what all is going to go in your book with no flexibility for you to put your voice and personality in. We don't want that. And that is not equivalent to a plan. On the other side of the continuum, what we do not mean when we say you have a plan is we do not mean that you have an hour set aside every week. That is the first step of a plan, but that in itself is not a plan. When we talk about planning, when we're talking about writing a book, what you need are specific steps that you are going to follow so that in each of those one hour writing sessions, you can check off whether you achieved that goal or not. Now, I want to start before we kind of get into the real planning portion, because I'm going to take you through some steps to really make a, an actionable plan to move forward on your project. But before we get there, I want to offer some things that sometimes don't get recognized as problems that are related to a plan because they feel a little bit different to us than what we normally would think of as a lack of planning. So the first one, I would say the most common way a lack of a plan shows up is you are making yourself sit down for your writing time, but at the end, you don't feel like you got anywhere. So sometimes it feels as though you, you know, you don't know what you're doing. It feels like you might as well just delete everything you wrote. Most of the time, it looks like nothing is on the page when you're done. And what's happening instead is that you've got your writing time set aside, but when you sit down, you're not sure what to write. Is that familiar? So what do you do? We're on our computer. Our computers are so Googleified. We're going to pull up Google. We're going to start writing how to write a memoir with no experience, how to outline a leadership book, how to do all the huge things that are really not accomplishable in that one hour time period, right? You're not going to outline your whole memoir in an hour, probably realistically. You are not going to um, plan and start your book in an hour. So what happens is while we have told ourselves we have writing time and that's our plan, that time is actually not writing time. That time is planning time. That is the time when you're actually figuring out the larger, more detailed plan for yourself. But because we called it writing time, now what we have done is set ourselves up to think of ourselves as failures, right? If it's writing time, well, then I expect at least a couple of pages in that hour, right? I think that's reasonable. And then when the hour is up, when our kids come back in from playing outside or when our husband comes in the door and is ringing the doorbell or when we've got to move on to our next meeting, we feel like such failures, right? We had that blank page to start with and it's still a blank page. This is not your inability to write. This is not a sign that your ideas aren't good. This is not um, any kind of a meaning about yourself 
or your book or your idea or your ability to complete it. This is a sign that you don't have a plan. So if you are regularly finding yourself using up that writing time, doing something other than actual fingers on the keyboard writing, you need a plan. Stay tuned. I want to get through a couple of other things that this might show up as a couple of other symptoms before we get to the actual plan. But I am going to give you some concrete tips and a, a resource so that you can make the plan that's going to help you move forward. But for now, just want you to be thinking about what are some of the thoughts you're having and what are some of the things you're experiencing that are making you feel like you want to throw in the towel that we can then tie back to this issue of planning. Okay, the second thing that I see happen is very closely related to the previous one, which is when we don't feel like we're making progress, when we feel like we just sit down at our computer and nothing happens, nothing comes out, we're just Googling or whatever, it becomes very, very difficult to protect that writing time. It makes perfect sense, right? If you feel like every time you sit down, you are just sending an hour out into the ether, an hour you can never get back, an hour that is not giving you any kind of meaningful results, how on earth can we expect ourselves then to continue showing up? It is so frustrating, right? We want to see, as humans, we want to see forward momentum when we are dedicating time and consistency to something. And I know, I hear this all the time, that people will say, as long as you're consistent, you will make progress. It's not true. You can be very, very consistent. You will not make progress unless you have a plan. So what does this look like when we, we feel like we're not making progress? I don't wanna defend this time if it's not gonna be productive. What it looks like is that hour that you set on your calendar that you protected for yourself at the beginning of the new year because this was the year you were going to write the book, that time starts getting squeezed. Other stuff kind of seems more important. Maybe somebody says, oh, can we have a meeting at, at noon on Wednesday? And well, your writing time was supposed to be 1130 to 1230 on Wednesday, but you know, maybe you can just end early. It's fine. It's not good, right? Eventually what happens is that we start to crowd out all that writing time and it's just one more year, same as the last, that book is not gonna get written. Again, this is an issue of planning. And a lot of times what I hear people talk about it, they, they think of it as an issue of willpower, right? I have not been strong enough in my boundaries. I have not been clear enough that this is my writing time. That's not the problem. You can be strong and clear and have boundaries and still feel like this is a total waste of your time if you don't have a plan. So if you are seeing that your writing time is getting crowded out by other things, don't be mad at yourself. Don't beat yourself up for not being able to make momentum. Instead, keep watching. I'm going to tell you how to make your plan that will allow you to make progress. And then that progress is going to motivate you to continue making progress. And the third way, the third symptom that this lack of a plan shows up in is just starting to feel like you don't deserve to have a book. You are not talented enough to write a book. You don't have any real ideas. And we start to really feel, we can start to feel really bad about ourselves, right? We can really indulge in this, this idea that like, oh, I should just give up. And isn't that easier? Isn't it such a relief to just give up when you're working on something and you don't feel like you are making progress and you don't feel like you know how to make progress. So the third symptom of this is just truly feeling really, really down on yourself. Now, I want you to think of the last time that you accomplished a really, really big goal. How helpful was it to beat yourself up for not moving fast enough? <laughs> I will bet it was not helpful at all. And in fact, most of us, the way that our human brains work, if we are not at least in some state of, you know, kind of belief or inspiration or at least positivity of some kind, we just are not going to want to sit down and keep chipping away at something that we're not seeing make progress. So we make it mean something about ourselves, right? We make it mean I'm not a good enough writer. I don't have a story to tell. No one cares what I think. I should just give up. And I'll bet if you've tried writing a book and fallen off a few times, I bet you had some thoughts like that leading up to quitting. And then certainly when we decide we're going to quit, that is just going to amplify things 10 times. So 
If you have been feeling any of these things, that one, my writing time is not productive, two, my writing time keeps getting crowded out by everything else, or three, I am just not motivated, I hate this, I don't think I'm good enough, I want you to reconsider whether all of those things might be an issue of planning. I see this all the time, that if people don't have a very, very clear plan of how they are going to move forward on their book, they are not going to. All right, let me give you a few steps that you can use to get started on making your plan. The first thing is you are going to need to know everything that will go into that book project. Now, I know, easier said than done, and that is why I created a free resource for you. You can download our memoir method checklist at pageandpodium.com slash checklist. That checklist is written specifically for memoir, but I'll tell you a secret that it really can apply to any type of book you're trying to write, particularly nonfiction. What you're gonna get when you download that checklist is every single item you need to make sure you plan for from start of your book all the way through publication and marketing. Now, you might not be ready, and in fact, I would encourage you to not start with the marketing piece, but what you do need is you need to develop your concept. We call this your six-figure book idea. You need to break that down into one kind of cohesive overarching structure. We do we use quadrants in the memoir method, but there's lots of ways to do this. You need to figure out then within that overarching structure, what are the chapters that you need to cover? And then within each chapter, you need to figure out what are the components that you want to have. Are you focusing on narrative? Are you focusing on teaching something where you want step by step? Are you focused on philosophy? Are you focused on history? Are you focused on telling the story? What, what is the thing that you're going to be focused on? And then you need to think about how you're going to lay your chapters out to make sense. All of that first part, there's a free video training that you're going to get when you download the checklist. So head over there, get the checklist, come back to me when you've been through your six-figure book idea. But for now, I just want to point out, you need to be super aware of all of the steps. The second thing you need to do is you need to get an estimate. You need to get real with yourself about how long each of those steps is going to take. So my, what I normally see is you're going to need about a month to get through your six figure idea to really, cause you've got to marinate on it, right? You're going to have the general idea, but as you're honing it and making it marketable, making it appealing to readers, you're just going to need that time to process. So I would plan a month for sure. Um, you could do a couple weeks if you feel pretty confident, but I would allow yourself a month because what we're trying to avoid here is feeling as though you didn't make the progress you wanted to make. So much more rewarding to feel like you're ahead of schedule, right? So leave yourself a month for that. When you get to the chapters, here's what I will tell you. For a you know, 45 to 60,000 word book, I would typically recommend that you are planning at least 100 to 150 hours worth of writing. That's just the writing part that is not the editing. The reason I want you to do that is not to be a bummer. I know that's a big, big number of hours. The reason I want you to do that is it's going to help you plot out the time that you need to write the book. One thing that happens is if we think writing a book is a much faster process than it is, then we beat ourselves up, right? Have you had this? You're like, how am I only on chapter two? I totally get it. It is totally relatable. And the antidote is to make sure you go in with realistic expectations of how long it's going to take. So once you know it's going to take you 100 to 150 hours, now we can start to get granular. Here is where we're going to choose our writing times and protect them as though they are sacred communal times with yourself. How many hours should you set aside? If you set aside one, you're going to need to work pretty quickly. This is going to be the best if you're somebody who can just sit and go. I prefer having a two to three hour block, although three can get a little bit tedious. You can start to be tired. If you aim for two, two hours, then if you plan to have one two hour session per week, you know it's going to take you two years to draft. Oftentimes when I tell people that, they say, oh, I don't want to wait two years. Okay, 
that's fine. But do you see how then we can leverage this? So now if we know we want a two hour block and we want to finish in one year, well, we need to find two days a week that we can set aside a two hour block, right? But we have that all laid out so we know what realistic progress is. And since we outlined our book, we know what our chapters are, we know how many chapters, we also can map what chapter we should be on at each stage in writing this book. That's usually enough to get people started. The checklist is going to give you the follow-up steps to the how to get your copy, uh, copy editor, get your proofreader, your designer, all of that. But if we can focus on getting that manuscript going, what I find is that people are able to feel really good about themselves. They don't have to Google. They know what they're doing, right? I'm sitting down. I am writing the first scene of this book and I need to make sure that I get three pages. All right, well, you can do that. And even if you only end up with two pages, you still made pretty good progress, right? So as you are working through your New Year's resolution, if you've already felt like you fell off on the book project resolution, first of all, let me tell you, there is nothing special about January that helps us write books, right? We can start at any time we want. So start your new, start all over. Put all of that bad vibes, all those bad thoughts aside. Let's start now. And the way you're going to start is not by sitting down to write. The way you are going to start is with a plan. All right. If you need help, if it would be really useful to have someone sit with you and make that plan, please reach out. I would be more than happy to do a book consultation with you, talk about how we might be able to support you in those efforts. And in the meantime, please do head over to pageandpodium.com slash checklist so that you can take advantage of that checklist. Use that as a framing guide to make your plan so that you will make 2024 the year you finish your book. I know you can do it. Happy writing. Your book deserves the New York treatment. From writing support to editing to design, layout, publication, and marketing and promotion, Page and Podium has always been dedicated to bringing you the best in class support staff to make sure that your book reaches all of the amazing heights you know it can. In 2024, to deliver that level of amazing service, we are raising our prices. But you still have time to lock in your book at the 2023 prices if you act now. From now until the end of March 2024, any new client who signs their contract and pays their deposit will be grandfathered in at our 2023 rates, 20% lower than what we'll be moving to in 2024. You got to act now. Head over to pageandpodium.com slash contact to fill out your application. I'd be so excited to talk with you about your book and get you on the path to publishing that New York bestseller.